Good morning. Welcome to this edition of the Service of Dixie Baptist Church, March the 29th, 2020. Get your family, settle in, and let's be blessed. We encourage you and invite you to sing along with us as uh, we're going to sing a few songs. We'll have a special number, and we'll look at God's Word this morning's message, Unshakable Faith in Uncertain Times. I trust will be a blessing and an encouragement to you. This morning. Good morning. Let's sing. Great is the Lord, holy and just, worthy of our trust. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is as we've just sung every day. Great is his faithfulness, great is his mercy, because great is his love for you and me. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He proved his love. 
when Jesus died on the cross because Jesus is God, the Son of God, God in the flesh. And we praise the Lord for who he is. And I trust you know him today. Let's have a word of prayer right now. And I would encourage you, as we did last week, right there in your homes, why don't you just take the opportunity to pray together as a family and ask God to continue to help us, protect us, bless us. Most importantly, that he will be glorified in our lives every day, not just in these days when we really sense our need of him, but even when he's blessing and we see the good things that, that uh, he provides for us every day. So let's talk to the Lord together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your love. Lord, your mercy is proved every day. Great is your faithfulness. And Lord, it's only because of your mercies, Jeremiah wrote in the book of Lamentations, that we are not consumed, that our lives are, are, are just nothing. But Lord, every day we are the recipients of your great goodness in our lives. And for that we give you thanks. Lord, especially in a time like this when so many people are nervous or worried, concerned. Lord, even some that uh, have uh, become sick with this virus. Lord, I just pray that you would help them, heal them, sustain them. And Lord, we just ask that uh, through it all, you will be glorified. Because Lord, no matter what Lansing does, no matter what Washington, D.C. does, no matter what anywhere else around the world does, we know you're on your throne and you have a purpose. And Lord, we know that you are doing everything in our lives for your glory and what's good for us. And so through this time, Lord, I pray that people would have a right opinion, a higher opinion of you, which is what the word glory means. And Father, be exalted and we'll thank you for it. Bless us as we go through this uh, service that uh, obviously we've had to make some adjustments to, a little different. Father, I pray that you'd bless all that are tuning in uh, on their computers or live stream or Facebook live. Lord, I pray that this will be a, a morning that we recognize as the Lord's day. You've made it for us. May we choose to rejoice and be glad in it and lift up your name. For it's in Jesus' wonderful and precious name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. We're going to sing a couple of more songs, and here's one that was on my heart and mind, and I thought it'd be kind of appropriate and fitting. We sing it here in our church. We've done it as a special number as well. But you can look at the words, and you can sing along with us. I know my God is near.
like that song says, I trust that you can sense his presence because he's there every day. You know, Nahum, in the first chapter of the Old Testament book, we call it a minor prophet, not because he was uh, less important, but because it's just a smaller uh, writing that uh, God gave to him. He reminds us when we go through the dark times, in the first few verses of the introduction to the book of Nahum, the Bible says that the clouds are but the dust of his feet. We all like sunshiny days. We all like good times, prosperous times, healthy times. But that's not normally where we live. God makes us to live in the valley. And when the storm clouds roll in, no matter what it is, family problems, relationship problems, financial problems, health problems, don't think that God has forgotten about us. You know, those that don't have the right kind of faith that they need in the Lord usually think, well, where was God when? <laughs> He's right where he always has been. And so we want to encourage you today, my God is near. He has promised never to leave us or forsake us. And so we trust him for it. Well, one more song, and then we're going to have a special number this morning. And uh, <clears throat> we trust that this will... Uh, also uh, be a, a, an encouragement to you. Uh, I don't know offhand uh, how new it is, but I know it's becoming a little bit more common, uh, this song. He will hold me fast. And uh, if you know it, we encourage you to sing along. If not, try to pick up the melody with us and sing along. You'll see the verses there on the screen. But what a wonderful truth again. Every day of our lives... The Lord is with us. He's near us. He will hold us fast.
Well, that's a good song. It's the first time we've sung it together uh, as a church. A few of us up here and you there at home. And uh, so as we're kind of learning it together, and that's what happens when you have live. Uh, you're going to make a few mistakes maybe. Okay, I'll make a few mistakes. But uh, we thank the Lord. Good, good songs. Thank you, folks, for singing along with us here as well as uh, you there at home. And I trust that you'll get your Bibles, and we're going to look at God's Word today, and I trust it'll be a blessing to you. Before we do that, listen as the ladies sing a song that's been requested, and that is, what if your blessings come as raindrops? What if God, as he does many times, he is always blessing, he's always good, but sometimes we don't pick that up, we, we don't consider that when Things are difficult and maybe hurtful. We think they're harmful. No, God doesn't do things to hurt us and harm us. He wants to prove himself to us. And I trust that even in the last several days, many of you that obviously have been home, and uh, we look forward to getting back to the church. I can't wait for our church family to get back together uh, physically and literally here. But in the meantime, enjoy God's blessings. Sleepless nights are what it takes 
Amen, and thank you, ladies, so much for that uh, wonderful song. And again, I do want to say a big thank you to uh, our music team as well as our ministry team. Uh, some time ago, we kind of divided up our church family into various teams to help us out in the ministry here because, uh, you know, this, this is the church, and it is an assembly of called-out believers who belong to the Lord. That's what the word church means. And Jesus Christ said, I will build my church. It's his church. And uh, he gifts every one of us to be able to, to uh, serve him. He knows what he's doing in our lives. And uh, so uh, with that in mind, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the gifts of the Spirit. And I ask our folks to kind of discover and develop what their gifts may be. And then we gave them the opportunity. We have, I don't know, 10 or 12 different teams, a hospitality team, a campus team, a ministry team, music team, mission team, and a leadership team and different things. And uh, so uh, because of uh, the circumstances we find ourselves in, uh, obviously, uh, we just uh, have a couple of teams that are working today. Um, but you can be part of the hospitality team, so uh, turn to your family member there and just say good morning and God bless them, and, and uh, I hope you're able to share some time together. Uh, this can be a wonderful time. Uh, people are starting to, re to realize, uh, you know, what's really important. I remember my dad used to say that uh, there's nothing like a problem, a difficulty, uh, to make you realize what's really valuable, what's really important. And uh, we're beginning to realize uh, some of those things. You know, in prosperity, it just, it's just our human nature. Sometimes we just have a tendency to take it for granted. And sometimes even as believers, we just expect God to do no, you know, He promises to pour out His blessings so much that we won't even have room to contain it. But sometimes His blessings come to us a little disguised. We, we don't see it. But I want to tell you something. God knows what He is doing. This is not just a virus. This is not just government. This is not just people trying to figure out what to do. God has a plan. God has a purpose. And sometimes in our need, sometimes when we may feel and sense desperation, God has a way of getting our attention, getting a hold of him. And uh, I trust that this will be a time of a renewing and even revival in your own heart and life. If you're a believer, uh, for heaven's sakes, don't. Don't despair. Don't, don't panic. I, I, I spoke on that last Wednesday night in our service. And, and <clears throat> when we, when we uh, see God at work, a, a, as I do, uh, we can thank him. We can praise his name. We can be a wonderful testimony and a witness for him. I don't know where your faith is today, um, but <laughs> I, I like what someone said. Uh, I saw this posted, I think it was. They said, if a tiny virus can do this much, think what that much faith would do. Jesus said if you had the faith as a mustard seed, you would see great things done with and uh, through us for God. And so I, I encourage you, uh, sometimes our faith is tested. Uh, and faith that is untested is not worthy of anything. And by the way, what, what is so important about faith is the object of one's faith. So many times we put faith, trust, confidence in maybe our own abilities. We put faith and trust in uh, maybe our resources, our finances, and, and the things that we uh, have and enjoy. And the Bible says that God gives us all good things to enjoy. There's nothing wrong with having good things, nice things, and enjoying those things. But sometimes when those things are uh, shaken, uh, we, we find out what kind of faith we have. 
The title of the message this morning, as you've been made aware, and I think you can probably see, is Unshakable Faith in Uncertain Times. The truth of the matter is, <clears throat> we always live in uncertain times. Uh, who knows what a day may bring forth? A couple of weeks ago, we didn't know we'd be in this kind of situation, and yet here we are. And so uh, James reminds us in uh, the New Testament book, he says, don't say that I'm just going to go into this city and I'll buy and sell and get gain. He said, what we ought to say is, if the Lord wills, I will go and do this or that. And so these days are just kind of a, a wake-up call, I think, and a reminder to us. And I want to challenge you, let your faith be developed. Let it grow. If you had enough faith to put your trust in Jesus Christ, if you simply believe what he said, if he can save us, by the way, <laughs> that's the hard part, taking us from a sinner to becoming saved, bringing us as a child of darkness into the light, being as sinful creatures, we're not basically good people, we are basically sinners. First and foremost, we are sinners. The Bible says that our sins have separated us from God, Isaiah chapter 59. And yet God, in Jesus Christ, had a means of salvation. Now, our salvation is a free gift. I believe that is what the Bible teaches very, very clearly. We don't have to do anything to be saved. We don't have to do anything except come call on the name of the Lord and we shall be saved. But our free gift of salvation cost God everything. It cost Jesus Christ everything. He came to this earth for the purpose of giving his life as a ransom to buy us back into his family. When, by faith, we believe that, we put our trust in that, and we ask him, to save us. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was the hard part. Changing us from a sinner to being saved into God's family and the blessings that come along with us, uh, with that. And if you have enough faith to trust God as your Savior, shouldn't we have enough faith to trust Him as our sustainer? to fulfill all the promises that he has given us. And so I challenge our faith today. If, if, if we've gotten into the habit of putting our faith in anything else, you know, you have a tendency to make that a God. Ezekiel uh, chapter 14 talks about uh, the children of Israel back in that time. They had idols in their heart. In other words, there was something that they thought of. There was something that they, that they worshipped. There was something that, that they trusted in more than God. And sometimes that's the problem. When things uh, are going good, and it's throughout the Word of God, you, you look at the stories of the Old Testament, uh, we have a tendency as human beings to just be thankful for what God has given, to be enjoying the things that He provides for us, even to the point sometimes of worshiping the things that God has given instead of the God who gives it. And that's throughout the, the Bible, story after story. We, we understand that God provided, he blessed, he took care of, and people just kind of started enjoying and blessing that. And somehow God in a personal relationship or that context kind of, kind of got out of view. And it's times like these when God wants to remind you he's still has everything under control. Let me say this. God's got this. Okay? Psalm 27 is a psalm that has been a blessing and an encouragement to me. And I'd like for us to take the time. So get your Bibles there, if you will. And let's look at this wonderful passage of Scripture in uh, Psalm 27. <clears throat> Some have titled this particular psalm, which is a song... You know, there's 150 of these songs, uh, many of them, about half of them written by David, some written by Moses, uh, some written by David's song leader, a fellow by the name of Asaph, back in uh, the kingdom era. And uh, then uh, some others uh, wrote some, 
But uh, the truth of the matter is, these are in the word of God. God is the author of his word. So these songs come to us from God. And this is the hymn book, the song book of the Bible. And uh, many times, obviously, yes, we read the word of God and we enjoy that. But, you know, God understands how he made us. He understands what we are. And, and music is an integral part of us. As a matter of fact, when we get to heaven, the Bible says we'll sing a new song unto the Lord for eternity. Music has a way of capturing truth and helping us to remind, be reminded of these, these wonderful truths of God's word. And so this psalm, number 27, has been titled, My Heart Shall Not Fear. Fear is the opposite of faith, and faith is the opposite of fear. They do not coexist. A person will have faith, trust, confidence, reliance, because that's what they choose to do, or if they lack that, they will have fear in their life. And you and I choose how we're going to live every day. Are we going to rest in the truths of God's word? Are we going to be confident, as I've just stated, that, that God knows what's going on? That this, this hasn't surprised him. Or are we just going to fear? If there is any fear, if there's any worry, if there's any anxiety. Uh, there was a line in the song, my God is near, that talks about all of those things. And I need to get back to remember, but my God is near. And when you exercise your faith, fear dissipates. It goes away. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of fear. As a matter of fact, <laughs> the first time fear is mentioned in the Bible, you know where it is? It's in the book of Genesis. When Adam and Eve sinned, they disobeyed God. God came looking for them. He wanted to spend time. He was near. He was right there. And God asked a question. And anytime God asks a question, it's not because he's looking for an answer or he doesn't know the answer. God asks questions. Jesus did this in the New Testament because he's trying to bring us along thinking what he's trying to teach us and instruct us. And God asked Adam, Adam, I was in the garden. I was looking for you. Where art thou? <laughs> did God not know where Adam was? Of course he did. It wasn't for God's benefit. It was for Adam's benefit. Remember what Adam said? He said, I heard your voice and I was afraid. Sometimes the presence of God can bring that kind of fear, uh, that kind of response and reaction because maybe we don't know him, maybe we've disobeyed him, maybe we've displeased him in a manner. And so, you know, we, do, we don't, you know, look forward to his presence. I remember as a child, my dad would give us different jobs, responsibilities to do and and uh, he would get ready to, to go. He'd come up here to the church, uh, and he'd say, you know, for example, oh, I want you to weed the shrub bed, or I want you to mow the grass, or I want you to do a certain job. And uh, he said, you know, by the time I get home, well, as a child, you know, you're still learning. And when I say a child, I, sometimes it got up in my teen years. You know, if I went ahead and did the job, I wasn't afraid when he was coming home. He could come home any time. I did what he told me to do. But there are a few times... I looked at the clock and I thought, whoa, I haven't done that yet. He's going to be home. I better either hurry up and get it done because if I didn't get it done, I had good reason to fear. And so God is the same way. When, when we put our trust and confidence in him, we don't have to fear. I said this earlier too. When you fear God, there's nothing else to fear. How can I have unshakable faith in uncertain times? I think the answer is in God's word, just like every other answer. Let's look at Psalm 27. There are other passages, but let's look at this entire passage. We'll read it together. You follow along, and uh, when we get done, I'll, I'll give you some truths and some lessons that I've learned out of this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. 
Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, that word tabernacle means a dwelling place. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my Father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted. I'd almost quit. I'd almost given up. Unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. What a tremendous passage of scripture. We're not just talking in this passage of physical enemies like we think about. You know, we talked about, you know, war and battle and so forth. The Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Again, Wednesday night, I mentioned this. What everybody's worried and panicky about and, and so concerned about is trying to avoid death. Any disease, any sickness, any day you wake up is a day that you could face death. You could have an accident, you could have a problem, you could be diagnosed with something. You know, death, for the most part, is inevitable. Uh, I've uh, preached a lot of funerals, and many times at a funeral I'll say, you know what, you're not going to get out of this life alive unless you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. The Bible says that those that know Christ is their Savior, when we believe that Jesus died and rose again, those that sleep, those that have died, God will bring with him their soul, spirits are in heaven. He's coming back to reunite them with their body. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. There will be a generation of believers who will not die. This may be that generation I pray it is this generation, this day, this age in which we live. I do believe. Look at the world events. Nothing has to happen any further uh, that, that is necessarily preventing God from coming. He knows when he's coming. He's got it all planned. I may not have it figured exactly right, but I believe in the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, he could come at any moment. And that gives me hope. And if I succumb in this life, to death, for the child of God to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So while I'm here in this life as a child of God, the Lord is with me. And when I die, I am with the Lord. He's always with me. If we're alive when that trumpet sounds and the voice of the archangel is heard, I think we have a clue as to what might be said. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 John was instructed, come up here. 
And the Lord was going to show him all the things that he had planned for the end of this age. And the truth of the matter is, God knows what he's doing to the end of the age. He's already told us. Now, we don't know every detail, but because God knows our life. He knows our days. My times are in his hands. I can have my trust and confidence in him. My faith can be unshakable, unmovable, because I have my confidence in God. No matter what kind of day I may be having, we look at it from our perspective. Oh, it was a hard day. Oh, it was such a long day. Oh, this was a good day. This was a blessed day. And yet every day is uncertain. And yet God is eternal. His truth is eternal. Jesus Christ is that solid rock on which I stand. Doesn't mean I enjoy everything, like everything. I, I don't like this shelter at home. Uh, I don't like uh, the fact that uh, people don't have the opportunity right now to go to work because they're, they're trying to take precaution. But ultimately, my hope, my faith is not in these precautions. My hope and faith is not in the government having the answer. My hope and faith is not that I'm going to you know, wear a mask and, and uh, protect myself from these things. My hope is in God because no matter what he does, what happens in my life, I belong to him. He belongs to me. And he's got a purpose for my life. He's got a purpose for your life. He's got a purpose for this day. Think about it. How quickly around the world things have changed. And yet God, who never changes, is trying to call people to himself. This could be a time of revival. You know, <laughs> in this day and age, in this time, uh, it, it's not that people think that the church is not important. In this day and age, it's almost become the church is not necessary. No, I'm here to tell you, the church of Jesus Christ, a body of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, is the most important organism, organization, if you will, on the face of this earth. Because we have the opportunity to remind people and point people to a great God. I could take the time and go through Hebrews chapter number 11, but you know those great characters of the Bible that uh, we refer to and we appreciate their life and their story. It starts with Abel and ends up with some of those that, that aren't even named but maybe referred to. Not everybody had a banner reputation. Uh, I, I find it <laughs> interesting you get down toward the end of chapter number 11, and one of these heroes of the faith, their name is given, and by the way, it's the name of a woman, and her name is Rahab, and thousands of years after she lived, it says, and Rahab the harlot, by faith, hid the spies. Well, we know about Noah, we know about Abraham, we know about Enoch, these, these great heroes of faith. <laughs> so is Rahab. It wasn't her life, it was her faith. By faith, Enoch. By faith, uh, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. By faith, Isaac and Jacob. Uh, by faith, Joshua. By faith, Moses. It goes on down, and then it comes down to the end and says, and so many more. Samson's mentioned there. A hero of the faith? He died in a heathen temple. He was always running after the wrong things, loving the wrong things. And yet he had enough faith to be used of God. He's mentioned there as well. So again, it doesn't matter on what you do. It doesn't matter on what people think of you. It matters on how confident are you in God and how confident are you of God. How can I have unshakable faith? The lives of these Bible characters in Hebrews chapter 11 was not worry-free, was not sin-free, was not fear-free, but they had something that countered that, and it was their faith. Let me mention these things to you, if I may, please. How can I have unshakable faith in uncertain times? Well, verse 1, the Lord. If you look at your English Bible, Lord, all four letters, L-O-R-D, are all capitalized. 
That is a particular name of God. When you see that, it is the word we would pronounce Yahweh. We would pronounce it Jehovah. God says, I am the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. That is my name, the personal name of God. Incidentally, a translation of that name is Jesus. Jehovah, Yahweh, Oshia, God's salvation. The Lord is salvation. The word Jehovah means this. He is the almighty, powerful God, the creator of the universe, the revealer of truth. When Moses uh, asked the Lord, who shall I say sent me to deliver the Jews out of uh, Egyptian slavery after 430 years they'd been there? God said, you tell them, I am that I am sent me. That's Yahweh, that's Jehovah. The psalmist says here, in this particular name of the Lord, his personal name, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. And after announcing and after focusing on God, if he is my light, if he is my life, if he is my strength, what do I have to fear? Unshakable faith comes and can be yours and mine if we focus on our God, if we keep our eyes lifted up toward heaven. Verse 7 and 8, Hear, O Lord, there it is again, when I cry with my voice, have mercy. Verse 8, when you said, Lord, seek my face, I said, Lord, there it is again, will I seek your face? Unshakable faith in uncertain times comes when we focus on God. Where's our focus and our attention been drawn to? The concern of the day, the problems of the day, the fear of the day. I'm sorry. When you don't know the Lord in that way, if you don't have that relationship, there's enough in this world to cause us to worry, to cause us to be anxious, to cause us to fear. But when we focus back on the Lord, your faith can be unshakable. Again, I don't want these things. I don't like these things. I'm not enjoying these things. I don't even want to minimize these things. But I do know this. The Lord is still the Lord. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when I look to Him, when I trust Him, when I call out, pray to Him, when I seek Him, fear doesn't find a place or a foothold in my life. And I have to do that all the time. And uh, I encourage you to do that as well. Not only unshakable faith when we focus on the Lord, but it flows from a conviction that our God is absolutely sovereign. God is in control. When we remind ourselves of that, when we think of that, again, in uh, verse uh, number one, we see it there. Um, if you were to turn back to many of the Psalms, other verses of Scripture, but for the sake of time, we won't turn there. But uh, you might want to jot this down or look it up later. Psalm 16, verses 7 and 8. God owns everything. God's in control of everything. He knows what's going on. Now, because of sin, when we lost our fellowship with the Lord, when our world broke, Man fell into sin. Romans says, as by one man's sin, Adam, many were made sinners. Everybody was made sinner. We have that old sinful nature. We're born with that. And it's not a matter of being better educated. It's not a matter of having more money. It's not a matter of trying to attain some high moral standard. Even our righteousness, what we think is right, our right deeds, the Bible says as far as God is concerned are as filthy rags. And if your good deeds, if your good works, if anything that we could offer of ourselves could get us to heaven, then Jesus Christ's death on the cross was not sufficient. It wasn't worth anything. 
Why did he come if I could try to find my way to heaven in any other way? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. In other religions, they say, I will show you the way. I can point you to the way. Jesus said, I am the way. And if that's not true, then Jesus was a liar and he didn't need to be trusted about anything. If that's not true, I've said it this way, then he was a lunatic because he claimed to be God and he wasn't. He, he, was, he was out of his mind. If it is true, he's Lord. And the answer to every question, the solving of every problem. I was just in Israel a few weeks ago and we went by the mountains of Gilead and, and driving through there, our guide even pointed, this is the area of Gilead. And it was known for making medicines, ointments, balm, B-A-L-M, a balm. We have an old song. There is a balm in Gilead. It was known for that. And the answer to that song is even what Jesus says and referred to from the Old Testament. He is that balm. He is the answer. He is the solution. He is the hope of everything that you go through every day of your life. So we understand unshakable faith is the kind of faith that focuses on, on God and it flows from that conviction that God is absolutely sovereign. He knows what he's doing. Back to Hebrews 11, Abraham. I've always, I've always appreciated this. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham went out. You remember the story. He was called out of Ur of the Chaldees, present-day Iraq area. He was called to go to the, the land of Palestine, or now Israel. But it says this in Hebrews chapter 11, I believe it's verse number 8. By faith Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. God doesn't always show us the, 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 the road map. He doesn't always lay out the course. It's not like, you know, Google Maps or whatever that here's my destination and, and, and it goes. You know, even if you don't know where you're going, there's a good illustration. It step-by-step -step direction until you get to your destination. And I've appreciated it so much because that's, that's my life all the time. I do what God wants me to do. I don't understand. I may not know where he is leading, but here's one thing I do know. He knows where he's leading. He knows where, what he's doing. And thereby, I can have that conviction flowing out of my heart that God is absolutely in control. Number three, Unshakable faith in uncertain times focuses on God, flows from a conviction that our God is absolutely sovereign. It faces suffering, heartache, difficulty, and trial honestly. Look what he says in verse number four. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. You know, David knew something of hardship, heartache. He knew something of consequences to his own sin. He, he knew something about fighting battles and enemies. He knew something about death. He knew something about sickness. And yet he said, one thing do I seek after, and that's not an answer here in this world. He says, I'm seeking after you. I'm looking to you, Lord. And so we face all of these things in our life honestly. Sometimes even Christians get the idea, well, now that I'm saved on my way to heaven, I'm not going to have any problems. <laughs> no, you're probably going to have a few more because this world is no friend to grace to help me unto God, the songwriter said. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. There's a treasure laid up for me somewhere beyond the blue another songwriter said getting our attention and our understanding that if we face these things honestly i mean really are we going to because we're in a sin cursed body because we live in a sin cursed world because our society is reeling from the curse of sin a separation from god missing the mark not hitting the target if we live here we're going to face these things more than not. 
And yet, we can look to the Lord and understand honestly that there's something else, something bigger, something better going on. If you want to have unshakable faith, we're going to look at verses 9 through 13. We've already read them, but it's fearless in the face of adversity. You can go back and reread those verses for the sake of time. I will not. But, but uh, we looked at those verses, and uh, it reminds us of whatever we face in life. I can be fearless. Not because I'm strong, not because I'm such a hero, but just like David said when he went and faced Goliath. He said, this battle's the Lord's, and I'm here to tell you, so is this one. This battle is the Lord's. If I'm on his side, I don't have anything to worry about. I don't have anything to fear. I don't have anything really to be anxious about. I can go to my commander-in-chief. I can get the orders from headquarters. I can rely and trust in him, knowing that he's already secured the victory. As far as believers in this world, we're just the occupational forces. We're just there to, to do what God has told us to do, and primarily it is... Go tell everyone about me, Jesus said, so I can proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I can be fearless in the face of adversity when I focus on the Lord, when I have that conviction flowing that he is absolutely uh, sovereign and in control, when I understand that uh, I can face these difficulties fearlessly. Number five, it forges its way onward when everybody else wants to give up and quit. You think about these heroes of the faith in Hebrews chapter 11. What was it? Well, they were determined. They'd made up their mind. They were pursuing a goal. <laughs> no. Everyone says, by faith, by faith, by faith. This world, D.L. Moody said, has yet to see what God can do with one person who is totally committed to him. Don't you want that kind of faith? Don't you want that kind of confidence and trust in the Lord? It comes from reading his word. It comes from the Old Testament examples. It comes from the truth that he gives us in the New Testament in these, these principles. And we forge onward. We go forward. The book of Numbers, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt and the lack of faith, their unbelief that God could accomplish what he said he was going to accomplish, get them to the promised land. The word forward is mentioned almost a dozen times in the book of Numbers. Keep going forward, keep going forward, keep going forward. The truth of the matter is, we can't go backward. The truth of the matter is, this is the day that we have. It's the only day we need to concern ourselves with. We don't need to worry and fear about tomorrow, what we shall eat, what we shall drink, how we'll be clothed. God takes care of the sparrows. He takes care of the grass. Can he take care of you? What does the Bible tell us? You seek first God and his kingdom. You do what you can to promote the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything else will take care of itself. Believer, you can have unshakable faith in uncertain times when you continue to forge your way onward no matter what anybody else does. There are going to be plenty of people that want to quit. I remember in high school... When I played football, I think we started somehow at the beginning of the season. You know, you have a couple of weeks in the summer before uh, school starts, the season starts. And, and I remember when I first uh, uh, joined the team there, there was like 70, 75 guys on the team trying out for football. Matter of fact, after the first day, I was ready to quit. I got knocked on my tailbone. It's bothered me ever since, but it hurt. I told my dad the next morning, I said, Dad, I can't even walk. I can't go to football practice. He said, you're going to football practice if I have to carry you there. That's the kind of loving father I had, you know. And, uh, okay, so I got up, and I worked through all of that and so forth. By the time the season ended, that 70, 75 had been cut to almost half, 35. Half of them didn't last the season. Now, some of them were for injury, but others were, it was too hard, you know, it was just too sweaty. It just, you know, didn't, they, they didn't like it. They didn't like the coach. They thought it was too tough or whatever it was. People quit. You know, you think of Gideon when he was facing uh, the enemy 
outnumbered by 300,000 Midianite troops. I've looked across that valley, and from where he was at the springs of Herod, he could look across. He could see the enemy out there, and God said, you've got too many. Well, he had like 3,000. That was still outnumbered. God said, uh, anybody who's afraid, tell them they can go home. You know the story. He ended up with 300. 300 against 300,000? It doesn't look like much. But see, Gideon and those 300 had something that the uh, enemy didn't have, and that was God on their side. And he pushed forward and pressed forward, and so must you and I. And if you and I will see that because of our confidence in God, when everybody else wants to give up and quit, you can go forward. Verse 11, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. I'll stop the reading there. What does it do? It feeds on God's word. It feeds on the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, Paul said in the book of Romans. That means if I'm not thinking Bible truth, if I'm not meditating on the truths, the principles, uh, the, the revealing of who God is, if his word is not part of my life, my only reaction is fear. I have to feed on God's word. I encourage our people, I encourage you, read God's word every day. We listen to the news, we watch the headlines. It's all bad news. There, there's, there hasn't been how many folks have recovered, how many folks really may not be that serious. All we hear is, oh, more cases. All we hear is, oh, more deaths, which are declining. It's going to hit a peak. We all have heard that. But, you know, it's just day after day after day after day. Here's what we're getting input into our minds, our thoughts, our hearts. And no wonder there's panic. Hey, there's good news. There's good news. This will pass. This is temporary. It's sad that, that some will succumb to what this life has to offer. But the truth of the matter is, if you feed on God's word, even when you are sick, even when you are faced with unpleasant things, even when you're dealing with heartache, and I found myself many, many times in my life, the biggest help to me has been when I go back to the word of God. We've all had heartaches. We've all suffered loss. We, we've all gone through bad, terrible experiences. There's some I've asked the Lord, I, I, I don't want to have to go through that again. I don't have a guarantee of that, but I can ask him. But the truth of the matter is, it's the word of God that gives me hope. It's the word of God that gives me his truth. I encourage and challenge a feed on God's word. And then lastly, unshakable faith in uncertain times finds a way when there seems to be no way. How do we get through life? How do we survive? How, how do we get victory? Well, will you look at verse 13 and 14? Even the psalmist honestly said, I had fainted. I would have quit unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This earth, this world, this time is not the land of the living. That's, this is the land of the dying. Heaven is the land of the living. So the psalmist looking around says, I would have quit just like most everybody else until I looked and I saw the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hey, believer, I don't know what time it is for you, but it may be only 25, 30 years for some. It may be 50 years. It may be 100 years. It may be tomorrow. These things of this life won't even be a memory. When we get to heaven... And all that God has prepared and planned for those that love him, for those that have trusted him as Savior, the, the, this life, the Bible says it won't even come to mind. How many of past problems, even some that we have lived through, you know, the longer we go through, the, the, the less they're maybe focused. Um, many of us may remember, you know, 9-11 when we were attacked and all the problems there and good heavens, that's, that, that's almost 20 years ago, and a lot of people born today, they weren't even here, but 
this news here kind of puts that as kind of a distant memory. When we get to heaven, there is no sorrow. There is no pain. There are no tears. There is no death. Because the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And Jesus Christ is the victor. I'm going to tell you what my dad always told me, drilled into me and people that ever heard him preach. Don't you dare quit. If you quit, the devil wins. Unshakable faith in uncertain times finds a way when there is no way. And that's the way of the Lord. That's seeing it from his perspective. Wait, that word wait in verse 14 means to trust, not just wait and do nothing. Trust. Secure in the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Trust. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If you'll take to heart these truths, if I will meditate, think on them again, I can have a faith that is unshakable when everything else seems to be falling apart. I trust that you will have that faith today. It begins when you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Jesus died on the cross on purpose. His goal the hour he was meant for, he continually stated to his disciples, is to be a ransom for many. He is that sacrificial offering to God. The big theological word, it's in the Bible, called the propitiation for our sins. That word simply means he is the sacrificial substitute payment for sin. And God loved you and me so much that he gave his son he paid the penalty for your sin and mine that I could put my faith if I will just trust. When I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I confess with my mouth what the Bible says, what Jesus himself claimed, what God reveals him to be, I shall be saved. I'll be rescued. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's God's promise. If you've never called on the name of the Lord, if you've never invited, that's what the word call means. God has sent out the invitation, whosoever will, right there where you are, you can understand that we're sinners. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner, just like you. But there's a payment for sin. Sin will be paid for, sin must be paid for, sin has been paid for in the person of Jesus Christ. And then if I will trust him, ask him, receive him, you see, our sins have separated us. Our sins have, have offended God. And for that to get back in right relationship, I have to come and ask God to forgive me. Isn't that true of other relationships, of other situations? If there's been a wrong, if there's been some sort of separation, there's been a problem, the Bible says we need to get that right and you need to ask for forgiveness. When I ask for forgiveness, it's up to the other person whether they're going to forgive or not. But here's the best thing. God doesn't wait to see. He doesn't test us. He doesn't say, well, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. The Bible says he forgets our trespasses that were against him. He is a faithful God. If you ask him, he will forgive your sin. You will be saved. You will be his child. You can then develop that faith that is unshakable no matter what else happens in this world or in your world. And I challenge you, accept him today. Will you pray, bow your head and pray right there as I close this service? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for how you reveal yourself, who you are, and then what you want to do and can do in our lives. Lord, if we'll focus on you and, 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 and seek your face and all these truths that we saw in just this one passage of Scripture, Psalm 27. If there's someone out there, may they call on you right now if they need to know how to truly be born again, saved. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to your mercy you saved us. And Lord, we ask 
that as folks call right now, you would give them that understanding, that assurance, and we'll thank you for it. If most of the folks maybe watching are a child of God, they have invited you into their life, they, they have trusted you as their Savior, Lord, may we be a testimony and an example of the believers. May, may we give that hope and confidence that, that people need today. It's not in ourselves. Man's wisdom does not have the answers, but you do. So, Father, I pray that you'd strengthen us, help us. I pray that you'd use this to draw us closer to you, each one, and closer to our family, closer to our church. We we be faithful to that. And Father, you'll be glorified, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Folks are going to come up, and we're going to sing that stanza again of that one song, and we're going to close this service, but as they're coming and getting ready, I want to remind you and invite you to uh, remember our church in your giving of your tithes and offerings. And uh, I read an article. I thought about sharing it, but I didn't. I saw others did, and, and uh, it was someone else. I think it was a former businessman that wrote, says, don't, don't forget your church in these times. You know, it, it, it not just to help with salaries or help with the uh, utility bills or other things, but, you know, there are missionaries that we support. There, there are others that are relying. And as a matter of fact, we need to put God first, keep him first. We need to give. And so we invite you to do so. And don't, don't forget that. Don't fail in that. And I'm not here trying to ask for money. Honestly, you know, we get accused of that all the time. But the Bible says that when I give to God, it helps me understand that he's in first place in my life. It honors him as I worship him in that way. And you can go to our website and click on the online giving, or you can mail in uh, your tithes and offerings that uh, help us accomplish the ministry that God has given us. And by the way, that's his plan. He designed that. I didn't. He doesn't need it be, you know, for himself. He wants us to be a participant, a partaker. He wants us to be a partner with him in that. And so you can set up an, a, a bill payment with your local banking institution, and just like you pay other bills, you can send it in that way. But during this time, especially when we're not able to meet, um, I would encourage you, make the choice to put God first. Focus on him and do what's right, do what he instructs us to do, and then God blesses. My dad used to say, if you take care of God's business, He'll always take care of yours. And so I just want to remind you of that. Now tonight, uh, we'll be back live again on Facebook and our live stream at 5.30. And I've got another message that the Lord has given me for us at this time and this day, trusting God. I think it'll be a help encouragement to you. So we encourage you to connect with us at 5.30. And then Wednesday night, uh, we'll do what we did last Wednesday night. We'll just have uh, kind of a Bible challenge uh, on that way. And that's at 6.30 on Wednesday night, April 1st, and I'm not fooling, all right? So 6.30 Wednesday night, 5.30 tonight for another opportunity uh, for uh, us to share some time together in this way and uh, get some uh, encouragement from the Word of God, all right? He will hold me fast. Let's sing this stanza. connecting with us. God bless you. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tonight, 530.